Today we're gonna be testing this. It's a carbon fiber drive shaft made by the Drive Shaft Shop in Salisbury, North Carolina. This is a shaft for a 2020 or newer G80, G82, or G83 BMW M3, M4, or any M car with X drive. This shaft is designed to replace the stock two piece steel drive shaft that has a max outside diameter of two and a quarter inches and rubber flex couplings on both ends. The part we're testing is a one piece filament wound carbon fiber shaft that has an outside diameter of three and a quarter inches. It has a three bolt aluminum flange yoke on the transmission end and the drive shaft shop's race proven 113 millimeter CV on the other. It connects to the differential through the drive shaft shop's new hardened differential flange that they make in house. According to the drive shaft shop, this design eliminates two common weak points from the stock shaft the rubber flex coupling and the carrier bearing. So now that you know what we're testing, let's show you how we test it. This is our static torque test machine, and we're gonna use it to simulate an overload situation like a high torque launch. It has the ability to apply up to 8,300 foot-pounds of torque to a part while measuring the torque applied with a torque load cell here. The torque cell is represented by the y-axis of the graph, and the green numbers here represent the current torque value in foot-pounds. Then it uses a rotary displacement transducer to measure the angle of twist on the part. That's represented by the x-axis on the graph, and the orange number is the current angle value in degrees. To make sure the data that we provide to our customers is correct, every year we hire a company to bring their calibrated load cells out to validate that ours are within 0.1% of their standard. Besides broken parts, the other main output of our torque tester is stress-strain graphs like this one. These graphs are important to our customers because they tell the story of when the parts that broke started to break. I'll walk through each part of it so everybody can follow along. The first part of the graph that we can gather information from is the straight part of the line here. This shows us the torsional stiffness of the part or how many foot-pounds it takes to twist the part some number of degrees. This is known as the elastic region of the part. As long as the torque applied stays at or below this region, the part will go back to its original shape when we let the torque off. Next and probably most important for a drive shaft is this point right here, the zero degree yield, also known as the elastic limit. If this drive shaft was a bolt that you were torquing, this is the point when it would go from righty tighty to righty loosey. Any amount of torque above this point causes the drive shaft to permanently twist. During this test, the component that started to twist first was the three bolt flange yoke, and that happened at about 3,100 foot pounds. Keep an eye on this area as we go on because this is where all the excitement happens. As a general rule of thumb with the drive shaft, if you stay between the zero degree yield and the ultimate torque, you'll probably get home, but you'll have to replace it when you get there. Of course, the more torque you apply beyond the zero degree yield, the less likely you are to make it. The final part of the story is the ultimate torque, which is the maximum torque seen by the assembly. For this test, the ultimate torque was 5,100 foot-pounds right before the universal joint broke. The sparks you can see come from the bushing cup and trunnion arm ejecting from the assembly. Now that you have a better idea of what's going on, let's check out the full test in real time. Beyond the static torque test itself, one of the services we provide our customers is a post-mortem where we go through the parts and examine the failure to help them determine the series of events. This example is pretty straightforward, but there are others that are quite a bit more complex. Seems like as the torque was applied beyond the zero degree yield point, the three bolt flange yoke twisted, which in turn started applying a torque through the bushing cup using the corner of the trunnion arm as the fulcrum and snapped it off. We also noted that there is now a gap between the pin fixture and the bushing hole machining in the bond yoke, which means that the bond yoke also twisted during this test. After we shared this information with the folks from the drive shaft shop, they asked us if we could do another test on the same part and try and break the glue bond between the carbon fiber tube and the aluminum bond yoke. This is something that occasionally happens with projects like this, where the data from one test shows the need for a second test, and we were happy to help them out. In order to make sure that we broke the bond on this test, we removed the three bolt flange yoke and pounded out the busted pieces of the universal joint and used our pin fixture, which is a steel rod that is attached to the test machine. Looking over the data, the yoke started to yield at 5,100 foot-pounds, which is right where we stopped the last test. This is what we would expect to see from two tests back-to-back -back on the same part, which is good because it means that our equipment is functioning and physics is working. 
The Bondio continued to twist until our torque arm hit full stroke at 6,000 foot-pounds, but the bond was still intact. The final thing to note from this test is that when we return the machine to zero torque, it's still reading 14 degrees of twist, which is now the permanent twisting deformation angle that has set in the part. We do still have to break the bond though, so let's do one more test. Luckily, this shaft design allows us to remove and reclock the CV on the spline so that we could compensate for the 14 degrees of twist in the drive shaft so we can get an extra 14 degrees on the high torque end of the test. Pay attention here because this test goes quick. In order to ensure that we broke the bond, we set the torque tester to max power and let it go. This bond yoke tube and CV assembly had an elastic limit of 5,900 foot-pounds and an ultimate torque limit of 6,100 foot-pounds when the bond broke between the yoke and the tube. For context, that's a thousand foot-pounds more torque than it took to twist the stock aluminum drive shaft from our three-quarter ton diesel test truck. And that's an inch and a quarter larger in diameter. Going through the post-mortem, you can see there's a new gap between the bond yoke and the tube, which tells us that the bond yoke has let go. It took us three tries, but we were able to find out how much torque it takes to break the bond. Finally, after all three tests, there is no visible cracking on the exterior of the tube, the CV still swivels smoothly, and the CV shaft is also not twisted. Thanks again for watching. This was a really big deal for us. Normally, when we do this kind of testing for customers, everything is done behind closed doors, and we don't get to share any of this information for obvious reasons. So that's why it was so cool when the drive shaft shop reached out and agreed to do this test with us. They provided the drive shaft and agreed to share all this information with you. So if you want to support them, check out their link in the description. We don't have any affiliation with them other than this test. I don't make any money off of you buying stuff from them. It's very important to us because of what we do. Freelance testing is our full-time job and videos like this are how we show the world what we can do. In addition to static torque tests, we do in-field torque and horsepower measurement. We made a video talking about how that process works here. So if anybody you know needs help with testing or has cool ideas for videos, let us know. Our website is in the description. Thanks again for watching. We have some really cool stuff coming up, so check back in for that. Have a great day. See you later.